A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them and everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Imagine you are asleep in your bedroom at home and the light begins to come through the window. Your mother or your father walks into the room where you're sleeping and says, Good morning, sweetheart. What would you like for breakfast? I'd like some oatmeal. Maybe steel-cut oatmeal. Sounds good. And you say 30 minutes later, you say this and come down dressed and you have your steaming hot bowl of oatmeal. That's the way it is in childhood for many of us, being cared for, being watched over by our mothers and fathers or grandmothers and grandfathers. We're looked over, looked over, looked after by our caregivers. Why would you give that up? Why would anybody give that up? You'd have to be crazy to give that up. Your mind would have to change in a way that would drive you away from your mother's or your father's oatmeal or their love. 
but we do change throughout our lives and our need for independence changes throughout our lives. I read an example of this about adolescence and the adolescent mind, that all of us one day will have an adolescent mind if we're growing up. Some of us have an adolescent mind right now or some of us once had an adolescent mind, let's say between the ages of 13 and 20. And if your age ends in teen, then you have such an adolescent mind. I bring this topic up because this is Pentecost Sunday. It also happens to be a special celebration for one of our young people, for Byron, who would normally make the Sacrament of Confirmation in September with Bishop Manny Cruz but he will make the Sacrament of Confirmation today at this 9.30 a.m. Mass. Byron, yes, you have an adolescent mind. That's not a bad thing. That's good news. As many of us you know, the Sacrament of Confirmation is celebrated during the teenage years, but it was not always celebrated at this time. Now in our Catholic practice, the Sacrament of Confirmation is given to young people who are, who are in their teenage years. Now, what was happening at the very first ancient sacrament of confirmation, or the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles? What was the mood? The mood or the scenario was that the apostles were in hiding, concealing themselves in prayer and reverence for God, but also concealing themselves in fear for their lives. They feared that they would be arrested and suffer capital punishment. They had been followers of Jesus who had been put to death for preaching the gospel. And while they knew of his resurrection, they were not really confirmed in what to do next. And there is in many heroic adventures, adventures this phase that the hero goes through on the way to being confirmed, on the way to being called, that sometimes the hero goes into hiding or withdrawal or isn't sure what to do. It happens in many heroic action movies. It happens, for example, in The Terminator. Sarah Connor is not sure what's going to happen in this futuristic adventure, goes into hiding while she then fights off Arnold Schwarzenegger and The Terminator. It happens in Spider-Man. Peter Parker is being bullied by his classmates before he comes to the realization that he is Spider-Man. Heroes are not necessarily born, they are made, and they are called to adventure. In my own experience, I recognize my own desire sometimes to, to withdraw, to pull back or to hide when I am supposed to be using the gifts that God has given to me. I recall, I, I have to remember that the proof of doing the right thing is not necessarily because someone has thanked me or appreciated me or told me how great I was or rewarded me, but it is based on the reward of our conscience, that knowing inside of us we have a conscience and that we did the right thing. It is a reward, a reward in heaven, not a reward or prize on earth. Recently, I read an article about the advantages of having an adolescent mind, and it is connected to this idea of being rewarded. Byron, you may not think it is an advantage to have an adolescent mind. Your parents may sometimes not think so. Parents of teenagers sometimes don't think that the teenager has an advantage having an adolescent mind. But we are called to remember that we want God's blessing on our mind, and I'd like to connect this to something we do before we hear the gospel. We make the sign of the cross on our mind, on our lips or over our mouths and on our hearts. And I have found myself making this prayer, and I encourage you to consider making this prayer before any difficult conversation, sometimes before I pick up the phone. I may make the sign of the cross over my lips, or before I send a text, I might even make the sign of the cross over my lips, or before I send out a message. We pray that the Word of God will not only inform us, but also will help us to perform to do God's will, and we will be transformed. And this is our prayer for Byron as well, for all of our young people. And I'd like to touch on three things based on an article I read about this, the growing of our minds. It has to do with risk and reward and reflection. First, risk or risk-taking. There is, shall we say, a game of risk-taking that we observe young people taking, and sometimes it may scare or strike fear into the hearts of parents to see young people taking risks. One time I arrived home at 5 o'clock in the morning in the darkness in the summer. My father was waiting for me. I was he was glad I was alive. I was glad he did not kill me. 
Now, this was a risk I took. Researchers have studied and proven, however, that a young person's willingness to take risks and accept risks is part of their growing process. I was like 20 years old at the time. John Henry Newman wrote this about the adventure or the adventure of faith or confidence in God. He writes that for all of us, the word adventure always means something about fear or anxiety or danger, and it is, it is true in our lives that we do face fear, danger, and anxiety. And that's not just true when things are going bad. It's really true even whenever we put our confidence in God or whenever we put our confidence in something that is uncertain in the future, something we cannot see. But this means something special for us in our growing, and we rejoice in the sacrament of confirmation for Byron and for all of our young people that the Word of God will help to bless them in the risks they take and will bless them in their actions and in their words that come out of their mouth. It is hard to speak the truth sometimes. It may seem to be risky. We hope that God will bless the risks we take. Then this section about reward. Now, we all want to be rewarded, and sometimes it's difficult for parents to see in their children the child's desire for reward. We might look at a young person and say, why does my child need to be rewarded? Why does my child always need to have something happen good immediately? Why can't somebody, why can't my child or my young person or the student in my class, teachers will also say this about the students in their class, coaches will say this about the players on their team, why can't they just understand the, the, the reward of a job well done? One researcher wrote this, that there's probably an evolutionary reason for the, the reason why young people want to be rewarded, and they want that emotional high of being rewarded. Because when you feel a particular emotion, you're more likely to remember the event. And isn't it true that there were things that happened to us that we, when we were younger that we remember for a long time in our lives? And we pray that the Word of God will bless us in our rewards, will bless our emotions as well. It's a fallacy to say that we should not feel our emotions or young people should be less emotional or we should be less emotional. We simply don't want to be ruled by or conquered by our emotions, but we pray that the Word of God will bless our emotions, bless our feelings, bless our rewards that we have. We also pray for Byron that the Word of God will part of, be part of the reflection of your life. One of the reasons we receive the sacraments is that we believe that we are always growing and changing. We come to receive the body of Christ, Holy Communion, because we are always growing and changing. We want the body of Christ to be part of our bodies, part of our souls. And our bodies and our brains are always growing and changing. This is, this is true for Byron and for every young person. Researchers have noted that the brain does not finish developing, our conscience is not fully formed, a part of our brain called the cerebral cortex is not fully formed until we are age 25. Our decision making doesn't really come into being until we're 25. One researcher describes it this way, that when we're growing up, we're like two different people or two different types of brain. If you think about the show Star Trek, the old TV Star Trek show or the movie Star Trek, on TV show Star Trek, there were two char main characters. One was Captain James Kirk, who was super excitable, super emotional all the time. And then there was Mr. Spock, who was very reserved, very intellectual, very calm. And that's what's inside of us. When we're young we're, and we're teenagers, we're very much like Captain James Kirk, very excitable. And the Captain, the Mr. Spock part of us is trying to keep up. But that's not a bad thing. It just shows how fast we are growing, how fast we are learning, and how much we have to grow. And while we have reflect, reflected here on the idea of risk and reward and reflection, we also remember that we also need God's mercy. God's mercy, which helps us to grow each day, and God's mercy, which helps us to relate to each other. We pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit upon all of us, and for Byron, come Holy Spirit, Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth.
I asked Byron and Nicholas, his sponsor, to come forward, and um, we're going to do the renewal of our baptismal promises. Byron, we pray that you will be a living member of this church, and therefore, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, seek to serve all people, and like Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. And now, before you receive the Spirit, call to mind the faith which you professed in baptism um, and professed with the church on the day of your baptism through your godparents. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for this, his adopted son, Byron, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon him to confirm him with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform him more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought Byron, your servant, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, free him from sin. Send upon him, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, and fill him with the spirit and the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. For the journey of newly baptized and confirmed Catholics this Easter, that the word of God may always be a light to their path, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing and strength for all those who suffer illness or injury, and the intercession of Our Lady of Lords, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of India and people everywhere struggling with treatment of the COVID virus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, Margaret Dangler, Carla Matarazzo, Nelson Monfiglio, Zal Velez, Rosina Yalegio, Sharon Dialoa, John Markey, 
and Krenkowitz, we pray. For the intention of this Mass, for the eternal rest of Gloria Kostuk, we pray. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mysteries of the sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit as the Church came to birth opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Lourdes, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. We're very grateful to our Rosary Altar Society and our Tricky Tray volunteers and team who worked very hard for the Tricky Tray, which, which began several months ago. Uh, yesterday was the day of, uh, that many, we welcome many people at the Tricky Tray, and the work is continuing today for people picking up their prizes. It was a tremendous effort to reformat, re-engineer the Tricky Tray in a new way uh, for social distancing. Thank you to our, the entire team. Um, and if you're here to pick up a Tricky Tray prize, uh, you can go, you can enter into the, uh, you can go downstairs through the entrance on the Mississippi Avenue side of the building on this side or uh, by the steps by the choir loft. Congratulations again to Byron, to the entire Alvarez family. Know that Our Lady of Lords will always be your spiritual home. We'll continue to pray for you and we know we can trust in your prayers for us as well. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended.